Welcome to Practical Uses of Urban Tunneling. I'm Christy Weisleder, Civil Engineer with Merrick. Also joining me is Ryan Marsters, Geological Engineer with Lithos. Today we're going to talk about the 27th Street Storm Interceptor Project with the City and County of Denver. Within the drainage basin, the existing storm sewer system is undersized. So the 27th Street Storm Sewer System will install a new large diameter storm sewer that will connect into an existing 108 inch storm pipe that is currently underutilized and outfalls to the South Platte River. This will help relieve the flooding within the Five Points and the Curtis Park neighborhoods. The images on the left give you an indication of the type of flooding that you see specifically at the Five Points intersection of 27th, Walton, and Washington. That's shown with the red star on the right on the aerial map. The project will see phase construction. Phase one, which is from the Coorsfield parking garage near Blake Street up to Arapahoe, was constructed in 2019. Phase two, from Arapahoe upstream to approximately California, is currently under construction and almost at completion. And then the following phases will continue upstream all the way to park. Right of way is one of the biggest site constraints, especially in an ultra urban area. Luckily, within 27th Street, we had a full 80 foot width of right of way, which allowed for a little bit more flexibility than some of the surrounding streets that could have been alternative routes for this outfall. The buildings are generally zero to very little setback, meaning they're constructed right at the right of white line. And construction equipment needs to be a little bit offset of that to protect those existing buildings and not damage them during construction. Overhead utility lines were also a surface concern as we had electric, cable, telephone and other communication lines running across every single alley crossing of the storm sewer project. Some of those utilities needed to be raised or relocated during construction to allow for equipment to be able to cross those during construction. The adjacent properties were also given a lot of consideration with the design choices of the project. The Coors Field parking garage is right at the downstream tie-in point where it connects to that existing 108 inch storm line. We also had multi-family residences that are along 27th Street with their primary entrances to and from those buildings right there along our storm surge project as well as there's a couple of business districts in the area that were going to be impacted by construction, as well as the traffic changes and general construction noise and construction vibration. The two biggest environmental concerns were groundwater and contamination. The image in the left, you can see that blue heavy line, that's where groundwater was found during the geotechnical test holes. And it's just below where the concept profile was of the storm sewer. The other big concern was contamination, which could include that contaminated groundwater. The area that the Coors Field parking garage was constructed was a previous cleanup site, as well as the entire Five Points neighborhood was a dry cleaning district in uh, essence. And today there's still a lot of dry cleaning businesses that are in that neighborhood. So PCEs were a concern being a contaminant in the soil as well as the groundwater. Utilities, utilities, utilities. Uh, there were quite a few of them within the 27th Street corridor where this proposed storm sewer alignment is. And specifically at the Blake Street intersection crossing, there were a lot of utilities, a lot of uh, large fiber optic banks, 
20 inch gas line, even a new 20 inch gas line was being constructed. Uh, and of note, one of those fiber optic lines happened to be a fiber optic bank that was installed with a five foot trench width. And then to help protect those fiber optic utilities, they just backfilled it full of concrete which meant that uh, working around that and constructing around that was gonna be very challenging and relocating those utilities was just shy of being completely not an option. So utilities are a big construction issue and one of the ways that you can protect them is to support them in place across the trench. And in this photo, you can see that there's a beam placed with a utility being supported. Well, if you consider all of the utilities that were in Blake Street, some of them are two, three, maybe four feet spaced apart. And you have a lot of utilities that are required to be protected and remain in place. It doesn't leave a lot of room to be able to try and put a stick of pipe in an open excavation. So with all of the considerations starting to build up and specifically the utilities, we lean towards tunneling across Blake Street. And so once we made that decision, it's what were the tunneling limits and you know what were we going to work around and how we're going to minimize cost and still work with the overall construction. So the tunnel pits were identified to avoid those entrances into those multifamily properties, as well as making sure that we were clear of utilities. And then we also had the benefit of we we're going to keep traffic open on Blake Street. We also made sure that we avoided any concerns with very difficult to work with property owners which does come into play. Two of the alternatives that we looked at uh, for materials were outside of the typical eight foot diameter RCP pipe that was being installed upstream and downstream of the system. We considered concrete box and that ran into some other issues and it wasn't as readily constructible as a round pipe. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the considerations as far as elevation and what happens with the existing utilities that were underground as well as how we worked around them and our ultimate solution. On the image on the right you can see all of those fiber optic banks, the 20 inch gas line, there was an existing storm sewer system, electric lines, and most of those were fairly shallow. So this proposed storm sewer, we were able to go directly below those. However, uh, there's one flyer of a utility that was particularly deep, and that's that eight inch sanitary. We look to reroute it, to lower it, to raise it, or see what else we could do with that sanitary sewer. And ultimately, it needed to stay where it was. So we could cross above it or below it. Crossing below it put the storm line in groundwater, which isn't that big of an issue with tunnel boring machines. We could make that work. However, it would require dewatering, and if there were any issues during construction, those dewatering costs were just going to continue to skyrocket. And we also had contamination and treatment concerns with that groundwater. So we ultimately ended up with that orange segment, which is two 66 inch reinforced polymer mortar pipes. And that was our proposed solution to connect from the eight foot diameter storm sewer to ultimately that 108 inch existing storm sewer that's right in front of the Coors Field parking garage. Our other big consideration in design was the schedule. So rocky season, 
was of importance considering we were tying in right in front of the parking garage that's used for all of their events. So construction could not start until Rocky season was over and there was no more events for the rest of the season. And also construction had to be all wrapped up with final pavement asphalt lift done by St. Patty's Day Parade, which left a fairly short construction window to get all of this built in a very short duration. So the tunneling options were all selected to pick and work with this very limited schedule. However, you did see everyone that was at these design meetings not a little typical happy with the Rockies every time they won is probably the only time that I've ever seen a group so consistently hoping that the Rockies season would end early. And with that, Ryan will lead you through the tunneling design considerations. 